Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. This is an extra episode that none of you bastards paid for or deserved. However, we are releasing uh, a Patreon episode uh, into the wild. We're releasing it to the public this week. Our studio is being worked on. We do not have a place to record that we feel is sufficient to do a video episode. So... We're going to release, what episode are we releasing? It was one of the good ones. Uh, the Pit. Well, they're all good, but The Pit was especially good. Mm -hmm. And The Pit, of course, describes a room in El Paso where they just throw bodies at the hospital. Right. Uh, and that was a fun one. So The Pit is going out Saturday night, so don't get upset. And, you know, start screaming and yelling that you don't have a new episode because you're getting something right now. You're getting something right now. A little Christmas charity. <laughs> For you, because we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. We just got back from a mall. I was trying to get a blanket. I was trying to get a comforter in a mall. And, uh, I mean, good luck. You know, just good Good luck getting anything in this country anymore. Good luck. Good luck at getting anything in a physical location. It is, if I was a conspiracy theorist, and I am, I would say that... Uh, this pandemic has been used to expedite uh, the marketplace in this country, uh, commerce in this country, to be fully digitized, completely online. Um, physical locations are mere showrooms. They don't have anything to sell to you. They redirect you online. Everybody, they want you to be online. I do not even know why they have physical locations with people standing there anymore other than to be, to exist as some type of showroom. I mean, we went into William sonoma We tried to get a pan. They go, we don't, we don't really have anything in the store, but you could order it online. You could go online. We just have the physical real estate so that you can walk by and, you know, stop in and see what's going on. They're letting in California malls, they're letting two people in per store. Mm -hmm. So there's a line to get in everything. In California, there are lines to get in stores when they are like stores that are like Supreme or like the hype beasts, mm -hmm. young kids or, you know, middle-aged people. I don't know. People that buy sneakers and T-shirts and then resell them online. Hype beasts. Mm -hmm. So then you in, in West Hollywood, you would see a, lo a long line to get into a store. Uh, here in the mall, you would see like a line to get into a store. And you're like, what's that store? And it's like bath and body works. You're like, people are waiting in line for a loofah? But what it is, is... Nobody can go in the store. There's two people. There's two people. This is the insanity. Yeah. There are two people walking around Bath and Body Works getting God only knows what bath salts that they can smoke in their car before they go try to choke a pit bull. Remember those headlines in Florida? It was like when they were on bath salts, it was like woman chokes pit bull. Yeah, when everyone thought it was a zombie outbreak. Yeah, guy yeah. eats another guy's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun headlines. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what they're doing in Bath and Body Works, but then the re then these all these idiots are standing online waiting for those two people to finish mm. so that they can walk in and get a basket of, got, you know, fragrant soaps to give to somebody. And they're standing very close together. Every Yeah, everyone. <laughs> right. The line, to, that's a great point. The line to get into the store is much more dangerous right. than the actual store, which is huge. Mm -hmm. The stores are pretty big. Yeah. The line to get in the store is a, it just a breeding ground of COVID. <laughs> There's absolutely, that's a great point. I didn't even think of that. That's a great point. The line itself is absurd. Mm. You can't six feet social distance a line because mm. then it would snake around the entire mall. Right. It would just get confusing. 
So people trying to get Aunt Ani's pretzels would be like, wait, are am I in this line or that line? <laughs> like, hey, we're trying to go to Bath and Body Works. You're only letting half a person in at a time. I got to put one leg in until someone gets out. It's just absurd. There's absolutely no logic or rationale to a lot of these rules. Everyone in a mall right now, and I've said it before, people are confused. Nobody knows why they're there. I go, I go for shits and giggles. I remember during the holidays as a kid, you would go to the mall. You would walk around the mall, and you know, there Santa would be there. And you know, you would I mean, obviously I was older, I was getting high, I didn't really care about Santa, but you know, you'd walk around the mall stoned, you'd go to the food court, you get a ranch one chicken sandwich. You know what a ranch one chicken sandwich no. is? Pull it up right now, please. Because people should know what a glorious Ranch One chicken sandwich is. Read it for everyone, please. Ranch One features sandwiches made with premium quality chicken breast, flame grilled to perfection, topped with gourmet greens, toasted almonds, and our famous roasted red pepper sauce, all served on a freshly baked semolina roll. That's correct. The taste you want without all the fat. That is correct. Please Google Ranch One chicken and cheese. That is correct. <laughs> I got the chicken and cheese. Please read the chicken and cheese for everyone. Okay. Let me click on this. That's the Ranch One Classic. Mm. Now we got to find Tim Dillon's favorite, the chicken and cheese. Interesting. Let me view items here. Go to the sandwiches, please. Here we go. Up to the left. Okay. Yeah. Now down. Are they done with the chicken and cheese? I think they might be done with it. Now. Fuck Ranch One. I don't even know if they exist anymore. <laughs> hit image. Hit image on the Googs. Uh, Google Ranch One chicken and cheese, please. Hit image. What the fuck? What the fuck? This is all pasta. Dude, I cannot even find the Ranch One chicken and cheese with had the long pickle. Can you put Ranch One Chicken and Cheese Sandwich? I am so angry right now. I'm almost as angry as I was at Godiva today. All right, dude. I don't know where this is. I'll have to find it. This is not exactly riveting broadcasting, but we went to Godiva. Godiva, always fun during the holidays. You get a little uh, hot chocolate or whatever, but I was a, a Godiva. Like, I signed up for the Chocolate of the Month Club. You would get the Truffle of the Month. You would show up every every uh, month at Godiva, and this exchange worked where you would allow you would give them your email, and you would allow them to, I mean, email you. The amount of times they emailed you was truly offensive. Like just they would, I mean, like before Valentine's Day or Mother's Day, they mm -hmm. would just destroy your email. I mean, just every day up to it, you know leading up to that holiday. And you would just let them, because I don't care, I would just let them email me, and that, and I would get a free chocolate every month. You know, first of the month, I'd go in, I'd have a card. I'd give them my card, they'd go, okay. They'd go, you want to buy anything? i go, no. <laughs> I want my chocolate. They'd give me my truffle, and I would eat it and leave. Because I was working on a tour bus. I'd, I'd stop the bus, I'd go right in, get the truffle, come back. But Godiva used to have these really cool shakes. Like with ice, they would take ice, and milk, and then a truffle, and throw them in, and it was really good. It was like a, a frappuccino. They had pumpkin ones. They had raspberry, chocolate mm. raspberry. Watch, I mean, it was good. And I thought that maybe there was a chance that we could recapture some of that holiday Godiva magic. Godiva, of course, is an American chocolatier. It is not. I mean, for those of you who know about chocolate, many of you don't, but Godiva as a chocolatier, is, it's not much, right? It's the Americanized, bastardized version of chocolatier. It's the mm -hmm. McDonald's of chocolate. It's nobody respects Godiva in the chocolate world. You know, it's not. It's not Swiss chocolate. It's not. It's not. Um, you know, chocolate even from Hawaii, which is great. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how good chocolate is. It comes from Hawaii. Um, it's not European or any of that. It's fucking Godiva. It's whatever. Right. It's fine. And we went in today. We had to wait, you know, 30 minutes for these two fat idiots to get out of there. And then me and Ben walk in. And I mean, they were so bad, these things, we threw them out. 
We just <laughs> threw him out. Yeah. We just t- took a sip and threw it out. And I'm now attacking them on Twitter <laughs> and telling them to get it together because people are risking their life in a pandemic to consume a Godiva frozen shake. Hey, the last thing we need is to have a, 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 a cup of... It looked, it looked, and had a similar, not only aesthetic, but taste to dog shit. <laughs> I mean, it looked like dog shit, so I don't understand why why this is happening. And I was very upset with Godiva. Also, the security guard they were using was Derek Chauvin, who killed George Floyd. And I thought it was very insensitive. And they said he needed a job, and he was down on his luck, and they liked to help <clears throat> cops. That's what good dive is all about. Cops. <sighs> okay. I didn't realize that. Good dive is like, we don't care what cops do. We just love them. It's weird. No matter what cops do, we have their back. Good <laughs> No matter. <laughs> I mean, what a strange logo. That's their new logo. Good Hey, fuck it. Blue silence. <laughs> Code of blue. Code of blue. So what I'm saying here is just these rules don't make, you know, these, there's two groups of people in America. You have COVID isn't real. It doesn't exist. Uh, You know, Tina 40, Trump won, motherfucker. Please play this video. This is where MAGA is really ending. It's just a total grift. And what you're seeing is uh, people are selling, and this woman, Tina Forty, is an enterprising young woman from Long Island. She's selling hats and Trump Forever socks and mm. Stop the Steel hats. They're on her Twitter, there's a great um, video. They have a Trump, you know, a Trump impersonator, and these people are having fun. This is what no one wants to admit, whether it's Antifa or the Proud Boy. Or They're having fun. Mm-hmm. This is what they want to do, right? When me and Ben walk around a mall and laugh and point at things, go, oh, the country's falling apart and everybody's fucked, that's fun. So for these people, this is fun. This idea that they're going to overturn the election is completely patently false, not going to happen, but this is an interesting idea uh, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a jovial atmosphere. And I'm not saying that there's no irregularities in the election or whatever. I'm not, I'm not litigating the election. I have no information. Mm-hmm. I have enough information to know that Trump probably didn't win. He probably did not win. Sure. Okay. Is it beyond the, uh, the, uh, the pale to think that there was some irregularities? No. Or that people didn't want him to win or whatever. Absolutely possibly true. Right. But I'm not. I don't believe in anything enough, and neither do these people, by the way, which is great. Right. I'm not trying to sell socks. I'm trying to sell hoodies. <laughs> Fake business. <laughs> but I'm not trying to go out there and sell stop the steel hats. Right. So that's what these people, these people under the guy, they're building a brand here, and they're doing this video, uh, and it really just lets you know where MAGA started as as this kind of grift where you had Trump getting into the Republican primaries. Um, and it was amazing to watch. And I've described him on the show before as the most successful con artist ever. Like he he knew what to say, but he was kind of riffing. You know, as a comic, we call it riffing. You're just going off the dome going off the top of his head, and he was landing punches because he knew they hate the media and they're fed up with a broken immigration system and they hate Wall Street and they hate the big banks and the whole political class. He was landing punches. He knew where to direct, and and he did it amazingly, and he broke the fourth wall, and he would look right at people and go, we kill a lot of people here too. We kill a lot of people. And people would say, well, Putin kills people. you go, we kill a lot of people too, and you'd go, motherfucker. We've never heard that before. And it was all this idea that he was going to do something different. Like he was going to, when he had the opportunity to do something, he was going to be different. And then he kind of governed like a 90s Democrat. <laughs> Didn't really do much. Right. I mean, did some sloppy things with immigration that, that'll get overturned immediately. Uh, a, a decent uh, attempt at trade. Uh, but, but you know, nothing on social media, nothing on, on uh, Wall Street really carried interest loophole, things like that. And, and again, nobody's done anything on this. It's not, I'm not even sp- especially faulting him or specifically singling him out. What I'm saying is that 
his supporters that were that were who in their fevered imaginations believed that he was going to be uh, this you know paradigm shifting figure. I think he was um, in, in in terms of discourse. I think he was in terms of how we talk to each other and the things that politicians are able to say now. Some good that some good comes with that. People are able to be real and 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 literally break the fourth wall and say and then a lot of negative comes with that too because a lot of it is just this vulgar base level discourse that has negative aspects too but it started out as that as a guy going let's see how far it was like a comic or like anybody who was like hey man let's you go to a few open mics you're like let's see what happens sure. let's see what happens worst to worst i get better at public speaking that's what com- like guys that right. start doing comedy, they, they tell everyone at their office job, they're like, what? Well, and then some people figure it out. He figured it out. He figured out exactly how to win. Um, and now he's going and he knows he's going. I know people that speak to him and they, they, he knows and they ask him, how long are you going to keep this up? Because another month, he knows that it's over. And he thinks he's running again. That is true. And I've heard that from multiple people that have spoke to him, that he thinks he's running again. He wants to run again. He goes, the field is empty. I'm the only guy out there in, in uh, 2024. Mm-hmm. So what he's doing, what he's really trying to do is fight tooth and nail and leave as much of a winner as he can, because I think in his mind now, obviously, once he leaves and decompresses, I don't think he's running again, but I don't know. But the movement that was built around him, the MAGA movement, the diamond and silks and the teen of 40s mm-hmm. and the people that have made that their identity, the red hats, the unquestioning devotion to Trump, the people that shut off their brains and file behind any political figure, doesn't matter who it is. What happens to them? Those are the interesting people. You look at them, they're cult-like. I mean, their eyes are cult-like, and they're all just trying to sling a few T-shirts, get a few hats, sell a few hats, sell a few pairs of socks, go to my website, subscribe to my newsletter. Hey, you want premium content? I got it. Donnie is our guy. Mm -hmm. You're in this cult. We're all in it together. It's the movement. He will be fine. He flees to Mar-a-Lago or some other country, whatever he wants to do. The movement of people around him, the QAnon, uh, you know, retards that are all sobering up all in their own ways on Twitter. I see some of them have embraced, have embraced like Reiki healing, and now they're talking about aliens. And it's like, well, what a, it's a short trip, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's a real short trip to Reiki healing and chakras. It, that's where a lot of it ends up. That's where a lot of conspiracy stuff ends up. It's why, I, you know, people ask me all the time. They're like, you and Ray did so many great conspiracy interviews. Why don't you do more of them? It's like, there's nothing left to be said. I don't understand what you people think is out there. You know, we've had Whitney Webb on a million times. It, it's enough already. And I like Whitney. But what the fuck else do you want them to say? You're not getting any. You, you, the story is out there. A small group of people have gained control of all of the meaningful resources and militaries on earth. Good luck. Go tweet. <laughs> I, what do you want me to do? You want to keep bringing people on to keep going over that same undeniable fact? Chris Hedges, who I like, has been writing the exact same article for 30 years. And it's becoming more true every year. Mm-hmm. The people that drive by homeless encampments, and I don't mean a few tents in L.A., I mean full-scale Hoovervilles, full-scale, fully functioning tent communities of people, and they drive by them into private gated enclaves all the time, and they're fine with it. They don't care. They, they, They don't, it doesn't bother, it won't change. It's not going to change until they either leave the planet or these gated communities go further off the coast when climate change gets crazy. But this idea uh, that these people are suddenly going to wake up and go, oh, this is kind of, this is getting to be a problem. It would have happened already. They don't care. So, so that's the base level. You can bring on writers and you can bring on anybody you want to talk about how this happened. Blackmail assassinations, all true. 
I'm bored. Truly. I've gotten bored with it. I'm not selling out. No one cares. None of my sponsors care what I talk about. You people fund me. You don't care. If there was something very interesting, I would I would bring the person on. But we get it. We all get, if you have any clue, listen to the David Talbot interview. Listen to Russ Baker. Listen to Nick Bryant. Listen to Whitney Webb. Mm-hmm. Listen to the things me and Ray did. It's all there for you. No one's really keeping it from you. If you don't know it, it's because you don't want to know it. And most people don't want to know it. Your lives don't get better if you know it. it your life's not better if you're sitting in a Starbucks drive through thinking about MK Ultra. I'm not saying don't read about it. I read about it. I'm just built that way. I want to know all the fucked up shit. But are you, is it better? No. And I'm also pretty goddamn powerless to do anything about it, which I know that no one wants to admit because the big lie and the big grift is that you're going to change it if you like and subscribe. If you smash the retweet button on my video, mm-hmm. we're going to build a consciousness that will overcome. I mean, that's the lie that I refuse to do. Right. I don't do that. I treat you with more respect than that. If you enjoy the content, pay for it. If you don't, don't. If it's funny, if it's interesting, great. What I don't do to you is the lie, which a lot of these people do, where they go, we're a movement, and you're not a movement. So the the Tina Forties of the world who are just trying to sling hats and socks, like, by the way, like many of her counterparts, they are basically investing you in an idea that, oh, there's power in numbers, and we're going to do that. And, it, and, and none of that's going to happen, and they know it's not going to happen. Here's, here's how I know it's not going to happen. You had your guy in. You won. You had him in. You're getting so invested about getting him back in. He was in. You're getting kicked off social media. Wall Street's fucking doing everything they want to do. Mm-hmm. You all don't like the vaccine. Guess what's coming? The vaccine. I don't know what to say to you people. Immigration, there's more immigrants coming over the border now than like there's ever been. Yeah. So you had him in. Ann Coulter has been the only honest broker here. She's been really the only honest person where she's gone, yeah, this did not work. This was an all-talk presidency. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was because it's harder to figure out how to do something about social media than it is to stand in a rally in Pennsylvania and have people chant your name. That's what he was concerned with. That's what he liked. He liked going to rallies and having people chant his name. That's what he was into. And you people... You people, many of you out there that really, you know, thought, and I thought he would do more too. I got to be honest. I thought he would do more. There was a lot of good reasons to vote for Trump. Both times. Both times. There were good reasons to vote for Trump. And there were good reasons to vote against Trump. Absolutely. Both times. Okay? Um, That being said, look at the record. You go, yeah, there's just not a... Now, yes, was he dealing with Democrats? Was he dealing with, like, you know, the Russiagate bullshit and all of that stuff? Yeah, he was dealing with a lot of that. And 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 100%, he was fighting it. But I, I guarantee you, four more years with, with no... I, still nothing. Yeah. Still nothing, folks. You can think what you want. He has no interest. No interest in governing. He just kind of wants to... He wants to have people chant his name. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and, and good cool you know like so this is a video where we got tina she tweets nyc stop the steal we the people she's standing there with a trump impersonator a a, a black chick behind her and then this uh, iranian woman i believe comes in at the end or russian i don't know it's just perfect this is exactly how you imagine this ends yes let's see a great American patriot, everyone here. We're going to drop a flag, Operation Flag Drop, right over the Capitol in Albany. Excuse me. Yes, man. Oh, yes, man. The president wins. Ohio, 
Florida, it is known that you win the presidency. The presidency no one has ever won those okay? two states. Without winning the presidency. No one has ever won those two states without winning the presidency. So President Trump won. You understand? How does those other five states, those other five states were swing states, and they stole the election with that. Whether you believe it or not, look it up. Look it up. <laughs> look it up. You don't go like that to me. Look it up. Article 2, Section 1.2 of the bill. Article 2, Section 1.2 of the That's your job. Do you your job. You should know that. That's, you yeah, work for the press, media. you should know that, okay? So don't be fake news, look it up. You should have your facts. Fake news. You should have your facts. How does Biden it's only beat, fact. how does Biden only beat Hillary Clinton and Barack Hussein Obama? How does he only beat them in six swing states? Is that he only beats them there. Right. Only the, guy, the guy was the worst candidate the Democrats have ever put up. That's true. Donald Trump got more votes than any sitting president ever. That's right. Yep. That's right. Biden campaigned from his basement. He campaigned from his basement. And you want us to believe that he got 80 million votes? Are you kidding me? He knew he was going to win. That's why he didn't campaign. Because he knew Kamala Harris made a phone call. She said, Joe, we did it. You know what she meant by that? We cheated and we got away with it. That's what Kamala meant by it. Kamala. Iran is not going to own USA. Russia is not going to own USA. Remember that China is not going to own USA. Americans are going I can't to wait. own USA. How long do you think it'll take Trump to just start doing business with China right away? As soon as he's, you know what I mean? Like he's probably ready doing it. I think a lot of the Make America Great Again shit is made in China. I feel bad for these people. Like I feel bad for these people because I understand how me being as cynical as I am all the time uh, has to rub people the wrong way because I just don't go in for this type of horse shit and like this has got to upset people even as people listen to this episode they're mad they're like what do you care that the cia stole the election i'm like i don't know that the cia stole it uh i don't think bush won the president and then gore probably won and then bush the supreme court decided that sure. uh, i mean I, at what point did we all start getting angry that elections in this country were like not free and fair Black people have been disenfranchised forever. Poor people take a day off to go vote. You get fired. There's not a federal holiday for election day. You know why? Because they don't want people voting. I mean, how stu it's so easy. It's so easy to just go, it's a federal holiday, so let's just do it. Let's just vote today. Right. There's none of that. They don't do that. And they don't do that for the reason they don't want anyone voting. And these motherfuckers want anyone voting. I barely want people voting. You know, mm. so the reality is just this whole idea that these people are kind of it's it's a sad it's sad to watch them because it's just going to get worse. I mean, it's going to get worse, man. I can't imagine what direction it goes in, but I'll tell you, it's not it's not going in a pot. It's not going in a positive <laughs> direction. I mean, are they going to try to keep this momentum going for the next four years? You know, all these people, they're like, we'll be out here every fucking day. It's like, no, you're not. You're not. Mm -hmm. That's what the 9-11 truth movement said. They're like, we'll be out here every day until, and it's like, yeah, okay. Now all the head guys in that are around Hollywood trying to, trying to direct, you know, Trisket commercials. Life moves on. It comes at you fast. So all of these people, you know, so you have the two groups of people. You have the COVID isn't real people. And then you have the people that go, none of these regulations have to make sense. We just love regulations. Right. We don't care if they destroy people's businesses and livelihoods. Mm -hmm. We just like rules and authoritarianism for the sake of it. We like rules for the sake of rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if a woman does all this work to get outdoor seating in her restaurant, which everybody agrees the transmission rate is incredibly low. Okay. And it doesn't matter if then a movie set right next to her does essentially what she was doing and they're allowed to do it. And the, and the mayor and the governor signs off on that. But with her 
restaurant, it's not allowed, and that's her livelihood. That's a video that went viral on Twitter. So we don't care if this woman has no life mm -hmm. and she loses all her money. And the blood, sweat, and tears, as Dave Portnoy said, that went into her business are just completely evaporate right. because it's a regulation and a rule, and we like regulation and rules, even if they're at odds with each other. Even if these regulations, as they often seem, are at odds with each other. Um, and we were told, listen, we were told, like, you know, eight months ago, we knew a second wave was coming, and this is what we're, we're, we're talking about when we released the episode uh, that's coming out Saturday. We knew a second wave was coming, and we were supposed to prepare for it. We were supposed to get ICU beds. We were supposed to, you know, uh, you know, build temporary hospitals, increase uh, the amount of capacity. We were supposed to, uh, you know, get more hospital staff available. We were supposed to get more equipment, more PPE, all that. That was the entire point of having eight months to get ready, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we had all this time. We, we had to shut down. We knew, and nothing was done. Restaurants worked harder than the government. Restaurants spent time putting in outdoor seating, putting in plexiglass, putting in glass partitions between booths, you know, or instituting all these new protocols in the kitchen. It's fucking crazy. They spent money doing this. They bought a shitload of food, which they're now going to have to throw out again. Restaurants can't keep doing that. They can't keep buying food and throwing it out. Yeah. And all of these people that just go, yeah, well, COVID's a real disease and it fucks people up. I agree with you. I know people that have it and they've been devastated by it. It's it's not a one or the other. There's no good options here. This is not this is not something where you can put the entire economy on ice and lock it down and then emerge with a healthy functional country. This is also not a position where you can completely ignore the coronavirus because a lot of people in America have se uh, um, pre-existing conditions that aren't even diagnosed because nobody has health insurance. So this will rip through people. It will fucking hurt people. And it will destroy people's lives if you let it overwhelm the healthcare system, which it absolutely could. Adults realize both of these two things. Children look for narratives. Children go, uh, this is all about taking my freedom. Some of it probably is. And by the way, the nefarious actors, whether it's after 9-11 or after COVID, they're always there and they always want your freedom. And they don't even want your freedom. They just want your money and they they want your obedience. And they, yeah, part of that is your freedom. But they, they'd like you to be out at work. They, they don't care if you, you're a slave for them. This is not... Um, but the children look for narratives where the children are like, well, this isn't even real. The whole world's going through it. The whole world is dealing with it to a certain degree. And then you have the children on the other side that go, I just want to obediently follow every rule and regulation that the federal government and state government tells me whether it makes sense or not, whether it destroys my business or not, whether it destroys other people's lives. It's never their business, by the way. It's always, it can destroy other people's livelihoods. That's fine. That's okay. Right. Um, and then those people don't demand that those people are given help that those people are paid or the, any of that. It, it's, it's, it's really one of those situations, like every situation, where people on both sides that are, that are ideologues about it and they're just uncompromising, won't have a conversation, are not particularly helpful in, in either, on either side. Saying that it doesn't exist. I mean, I had an argument with somebody the other day. They're like, it's not, it doesn't exist. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean it doesn't exist? Like, what exactly is that opinion? That's an opinion? It doesn't exist? That's not an opinion, okay? And I'm all you guys in the comments will be like, yo, it does, it's such, you don't know it does. Yeah, okay. My friend's a chiropractor, and he said, he's a doctor, he's a chiropractor. And he said, no, it clearly exists. The death rate is not nearly as high as it was. Mm -hmm. Mortality rate is dropping, and... But it's real. And then on the other side, you've got a lot of evil motherfuckers in this country that go, oh, great, a pandemic. How can we use this to fucking make sure everybody shops online forever and that nobody owns an automobile and nobody? Yeah, I believe that 110 percent. So I had Whitney Webb on the show to talk about it. I believe that 110 percent that there are forces out there that are going to use this the same way they use 9-11, which at the time, most of you guys that don't like COVID thought that was great. <laughs> and let's be honest. Remember how much you liked that? Patriot Act, we're going to go bomb everyone and fuck them all up. You thought that was great. 
thought that was a great idea. And now it's like, nah, maybe not so much. But you thought that was a great idea. Um, so, yeah, those people are always there. They're never not there in this country, and they'll never not be there. Um, but what we should have done is we should have fucking prepared for a second wave and opened things up with distancing and with masks and with whatever was needed, and it should have been hyper-local, and it should have been responsive, and people should have talked about you know immune health, and they should have talked about this and that. But nobody did any of that shit. Nobody fucking cared. Gavin Newsom went to the French Laundry, sans mask, you know, because he doesn't give a fuck. Uh, you know, Tina Forty's out there selling socks, and Trump's playing golf. So, I mean, good luck. I mean, good luck out there. I mean, truly, yeah, your chances of getting getting killed from this are incredibly low. The chances of healthcare systems being overwhelmed, I don't know. I talk to people in them, and they... Some of them think we're overreacting. Some of them don't. Some of them think it's going to be a hell in January. I don't know. It's not my job. Not my job. Not my job. I, I just know that we, you can't completely destroy an economy. That, I mean, that, this is all rational. This is rational, which is why it'll anger people. People hate rationality. Now it offends them because they don't, their lives are so utterly meaningless that unless they're involved in some hero journey like Jordan Peters, oh, you got to cut, give the gold to the kill the dragon and give the gold to your dad and the fire, <laughs> whatever, whatever the fuck he was talking about. Slay the dragon and bring the gold back to the village. You know, unless people feel that they're invested in some like historic monumental thing, they just they realize their life is just about like jerking off and postmates. Mm -hmm. So they can't even under they can't even fucking fathom that. So just for a few minutes on Twitter, at least they're part of like some crusade, but it's like, it's really not that. What it really is is just this is how a country that was destroyed 30 years ago would respond to a pandemic. That's all. Mm -hmm. Or any challenge. This is how a country that was destroyed 30 years ago would respond to anything. Right. We have game show hosts in the White House. Uh, Kim Kardashian's trying to get people out of jail. Um, you know, our most popular app in this country now has... You know, 16-year-old millionaires dancing in the streets while the air quality in California, you can't even breathe. You know, that, how would that country do under duress? How would it do? Think about it. Make up a fake country in your head. Put Pat Sajak, who was the guy who did Wheel of Fortune, yes. make him the leader of that country. Okay. Make uh, the most popular app in that country... Uh, an app where people don't even speak. They take songs that someone else sang, lip sync them, and gyrate their hips to it without a scintilla of no original content, no artistic thought, no value to anything happening. Mm. That's the largest growing <laughs> pastime. And then the other side of that app, TikToks, people just watching other people get hit by cars, I guess. <laughs> That's the cultural center of the country. That's the culture. Then we have Pat Sajak, who's just, remember Wheel of Fortune when they would spin the wheel? He'd go, big money, big money. Mm. So just imagine that. That's like the president's catchphrase. His State of the Union, he gets up and goes, hey, it's like fake news, except Pat Sajak would go, big money, big money. <laughs> Big money, and the crowds go, yeah, big money, and they'd have big money hats on. They go, yeah, big money, Pat, uh -huh. and then he's he's the president. If that country had a problem, how would people react when the culture's been rotted to the point where it's just a complete farce? It's a farce, okay. And, and, and you, if you know me and you know anything about my material, I don't, I'm not at all about TikToking nurses or the crying and the screaming. None of that works. None of that is how a tough country gets out of a shit situation. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I'm about, you got to be a little stoic. It's unfortunate. It's one of those things. I stay it on stage. Doesn't mean I don't have heart and I don't care about people that are having bad situations, but. If you're in a fire and the house is burning down, you you shouldn't vlog about it. Just get out of there. You shouldn't be like, I could just feel the fire burning the kitchen now. I remember that kitchen. It was so many memories. Like, just go. 
We're trying to survive here. But rationality offense, but you get angry at you. They get actually very, very viscerally angry if you respond to anything rationally. Because there's got to be good and evil, and there's got to be a fight, and we're on the right side, and then the orcs are on the other side, and we got to throw the ring in Mount Doom, and it's just boring. Truly boring. When you talk to, like, I like now, like, I like talking to, like, cold, like, rational people that don't care about anything, like, that are almost, they sound like sociopaths. That's the thing. Rationality sounds like sociopathy now because when you have a cool detached look you sound like a sociopath when you are pretending to care about people and you're losing your mind and you're screaming and yelling you feel like you got a lot of heart but when you just go well if you look at the numbers and the death rate is actually not that high and the transmissibility you know the transmission rate is you know very high in, in, in certain areas but not in others they go wait a minute we got a sociopath here we got somebody who's out of their fucking mind. Right. Do you not care about people dying? There are people dying. And that's what you're getting from like a lot of Hollywood and a lot of the media is they just want to talk about people dying. And then the other side, Tina Forty, just goes, I'm just trying to sell a hat. I'm just trying, I just believe in this guy, Donald Trump, because I have nothing going on. Like that's my, I have nothing else going on. Not, you know, Tina Forty was probably not on like a momentous journey of self discovery. She just said, "If I yell into um, the void, someone's gonna yell back," and that's what happened. Right? She just went, "Motherfucker, motherfucker, <laughs> motherfucker," and people just started yelling back. And that—that's really what it is and it's kind of the end of it it's kind of sad i'll miss maga i love a good grift i lo- and, and i mean they were funny and they were they, they pissed off all the people that i hate some of them are the people that i you know i i don't like the maga people either i don't like them because they don't they don't they didn't get it was a con right that's what was disappointing if if one of them had turned around to me and just giggled and went can you believe it <laughs> I would have been like, oh, dude, this is fucking awesome. But they truly believe a guy that lived on the top of a skyscraper that he owned, uh, who lived in a gilded apartment. I mean, it was literally gold, who ran Miss Universe pageants and who ran uh, casinos, cared about the workers. I mean, guys, come on. Come on now. He cared about the American worker. Yeah. That's why he spent so much time with them at Bill and Hillary Clinton's wedding. Or the 15 years he spent hanging around Hollywood with Mark Burnett. The workers. The workers, the people that put his makeup on before he had a TV show. It's like, guys, you got to get over that. You got to grow up a little bit. I mean, how many years are you going to be on the planet, huh? How many years are you going to be on the planet? You're going to believe this shit? Till what? Till you, you're dropping dead? I mean, it is funny that people that don't believe in COVID, a lot of them are dying, and like their last words are like, uh, I, this can't be real, and then they're dying. What a darkly kind of Shakespearean <laughs> but hilarious. I mean, you would just want to go pure humor. Pure. It, it's like a dark comedy, like an arsenic and old lace, whatever, mm. the monkey's paw. It's like one of those weird things where like a plague descends, and people are like, this isn't real. It can't be real. Ugh. It's like Little Shop of Horrors where the plant's eating the people. It's just funny. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to laugh at it, but it is a little funny to deny the thing that's killing you as it's killing you right before you die. That belief is so strong. Maybe I'm missing out on life because maybe life's about believing in something so I believe in my ability to make people laugh. I did. I, I figured out how to make a career at that. There were times when that was hard to believe in. But maybe that's what life is about, just believing in anything, even if it's nonsense. Believing in something so much that as it's killing you, you go, no. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what life's about. Maybe I've missed the whole thing. I mean, maybe I've missed out on the entire thing. 
because I've never been that certain that I was right about anything other than the fact that like I'm I'm funny and I'll work hard, which propelled me through the business. But like these people that just believe that like Trump loves them or like Kamala Harris is going to fix things or that Joe Biden's even on earth. I mean, the guy's not even on earth. Where is he? But like the fact that any of these people believe this, and I don't mean like think maybe it could happen because I get I get that I get go, yeah maybe I don't want more, but the idea that it's actually a something you'll die for, like you'll you'll literally put your life in that belief, and you don't know these people, you don't know them, you don't know them, never met them, it's never met them, isn't that amazing? There's so few people in my life. You know, there's a lot of people, for example. People ask me what I think about certain things, right? It was just thinking about certain comics who've been accused of things, whatever. And I go, you know, here's what I think. I don't know if they're lying. I don't know them well. I do my job sometimes after they do their job or before they do their job, and we pass each other in the halls and we chat in a parking lot. I do not know them. I cannot look in their eyes and, and ascertain if they're lying. I don't have any training. I'm not a secret agent. I don't know, and I, I I just don't know what if they're saying is true, or if it's a defense mechanism, or if it's something that they have to say to keep their job and their life. So I don't know. And people go, "What do you think about that?" I say, "Well, what I think is I can think about something, and I could tell you my belief system because I like to pontificate and go, "Well, yeah, here's what here's what I think about this guy," but I don't know. So I'm uncomfortable with people losing their entire careers because it's like I don't I don't have the facts and I don't know. But I also in the same vein, I'm very uncomfortable believing that anybody I've never met who's a politician is gonna save me or save anybody. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I'm not saying you shouldn't try to make the world better in however way you want to do it. But, like, just this belief, it's so strong. And maybe I'm missing out on life. Maybe that is what life is about, where it's just you have that crazy, irrational, illogical belief in a God or in politics or in something that it just gets you through. It comforts you. When your head hits the pillow, you go, well, at least so-and-so is true. Right. At least this is true. Everything else is fake and everything's bullshit and my wife's mad at me and my kids hate me and I couldn't make any money and the guys at work don't recognize my contributions and the fucking cars broke down again and the dog has cancer and how are we going to pay for that? And this neighborhood's getting shittier and shittier but we can't afford to move out of it, you know? And and, and all of that is, is undeniably true and though that's the facts, that's the writing on the wall and I might have prostate cancer and my parents are probably disappointed in me and they're going to die too and who's going to pay for that fucking funeral? And I know... All of that is true. Like you could just dollars to donuts. That's the reality of that's the reality of what it is. But I also know Donald Trump cares about me. He cares about me. I, I just know it. I thank God for that. Because if that guy didn't care about me, if a billionaire real estate developer in Manhattan didn't care, I, I would I don't even know. That other stuff might bother me. If he didn't care about me, that other stuff might actually start getting to me. Mm -hmm. But because I have him and Tina Forty and Diamond and Silk and we can own the libs and we can go on Facebook and have fun and I can wear my MAGA hat and it pisses my daughter off and she's got purple hair and she's going to college and she talks a lot of shit and she doesn't know what the world's really all about and fuck her. And I wear my MAGA hat and it pisses people off and I like that. And I'm part of a team and we got the, the biggest... Fucking, you know, big dog, Donnie Trump, says whatever he wants, pisses everyone off. Thank God, because I think I might have prostate cancer. And I don't know if I have the money. I don't have the health insurance that's going to help that. Mm -hmm. I don't have the health insurance going to help that. But, but Donnie T is going to take him to the mat. You're going to take him to the mat for me. It's a dark reality, but that's what it is. Yeah, it's a dark reality, folks, but that's what it is. Well, I mean, Donnie T... Just the same as that cat woman, that cat mom, who's wine drunk and taking pictures of bread she baked that, that looks 
crazy. It doesn't even look like bread. And she's like, oh, my God, housewife skills need help. And she's just drunk and, you know, she's a sad, weird, you know, person that went to a liberal arts school and cried when she graduated because she didn't want it to end because she felt safe. Mm -hmm. And now she's living in some big city and she doesn't really understand her sister who lives in the Midwest with kids. She thinks that's so weird. She's friends with some people that did comedy and some guy in a band. She's a dilettante. She's in the realm of the artistic, but she doesn't have any talent herself. I mean, every now and then she'll sketch something or draw something with a pencil. But I mean, what is she, a child? She's in her early 30s, and she's just stomping around Bushwick with white, uh, you know, Converse sneakers that get dirtier and dirtier every year. It's, you know, her rite of passage. And she just, you know, is so happy that a woman of color is going to be vice president, you know, even though her eggs are drying up and she'd probably like to have a kid. She wished she could find love with somebody. She just wished anyone could make her come, but they can't. They're so into themselves. And she's actually disgusted by how much they talk about, you know, grad school and theory and Marxism. And she just doesn't understand much of it. She just wants someone to actually love her. You know, she doesn't want to admit that. She doesn't want to admit that because then she'd be a pig like her sister who lives somewhere outside of Tulsa and they go to, you know, they go to, uh, you know, uh, Texas Roadhouse and they like the cinnamon bread and they dunk it in the cinnamon butter and they take photos of it. And they put it on Instagram. And that's disgusting, you know, because her sister doesn't understand that two years ago she met Julia Louis-Dreyfus at a party and she spoke to her and it was amazing. I mean, Julia Louis Dreyfus, she met her and, you know, she just, you know, she's just getting older and she realizes that she doesn't have any real friendships and she didn't cultivate any talent and she's been vacationing in other people's lives. She's a fraud. She's been lying to herself and everyone around her and it's just gotten, it's gotten bad. It's gotten sad. She's taking antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. She just drinks a little too much, takes too many pills, but when she... She puts her head on the pillow every night. She goes, but Kamala did it. Yes, queen, Kamala did it. And if Kamala didn't do it, those other things, they might bother her. <laughs> they might start eating away at her, but, but Kamala did it. Yes, queen. I, I just don't want to be either one of those people. And if you guys want to be them, hey, you, you be what you want to be. I just, I don't see the value in that. I don't see the value that, you know, your, lot, your circle should be small, the amount of friends you have, you should have very close friendships with very few people. And then you should have a lot of people that you know that are interesting and fun. But it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the bus rule. You know what the bus rule is? No. There should be a small group of people that you're really close friends with. And then there should be, you should have a, gr a larger group of people that are very interesting, but you, you don't really mind if they're hit by a bus. Like you're sad. You're like, oh, that sucks. But it doesn't take it doesn't take you know it doesn't like take the piss out of your day. Right. You just kind of keep going. You might go to the funeral, but it's not like Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. But that's that's what it is. And you should have friends, you should be connected to people, but you should have small groups of people and the things you're into and you put people in your life that are into the same shit you're into. And not always. I mean you can challenge yourself, but like this pretend life that we've all fucking created, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's life is too short. It's like when you're on your deathbed, are you going to think about Nancy Pelosi? I mean, is that what you're really going to think about unless you're like Nancy Pelosi or somebody <laughs> that knows her? Yeah. I mean, when you're on your deathbed, are you really going to think about Donald Trump? Is that what you're going to think about? The rallies you went to for Donald Trump? I'm sorry to depress people here, but is that yeah yeah the other day you go to I went to a diner. There's a black guy there in a the, the diner eating dinner with your family. Seb Sebastian, hi. Hey. We really appreciate you coming in to do the audiobook. <laughs> but we just can you please we just want to stick to kind of what's written because some of some of what you're saying is offensive. I don't mean to, hey, hey, I don't mean to offend anybody. All right? I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just telling you right now, there are Jewish people now <laughs> trying to take your money everywhere you look. They're trying to take your money. And black people are eating in restaurants. Well, my family, Se S Sebastian, I mean, this is really, this is, you're doing, you're reading a children's audio book, and we don't understand why you do. All right, I'm sorry about that. 
I just, you, you can't go in the Dunkin' Donuts without some homeless Indian lady working there. Like in a, in the blanket. She's got like blankets and she's got a diabetic boot and like that one big foot. Like elephantitis at a foot. And I'm like, I'm trying to get a cup of tea and there's this big, big old Indian bitch. And I'm trying to... No, but what I, what, you know what I'm saying, folks. It's, it's, it, we, we wanted to do an extra episode here today for you because we don't want you to get mad that I'm putting out the, uh, what's it called? The regular episode? No, oh, retard. What's the name of it? The Pit as the regular episode, yeah. The Pit. We got to get a P.O. box for the show, man. I mean, yes. you're not on, you, you got to do it. You know why? Because people want to send us stuff. Yeah. We're gonna. I want to open Pit barbecue sauce. You can only get it back east. Oh, yeah. Have Have you gotten a... No, but we tried to track it down that one time. We couldn't find it anywhere. Tell everyone what you did today. Tell everyone why you were late today. Oh, I got in a car wreck. And why'd you, how'd you do that? I spilled a soda as I was leaving my street. I was like four houses down, and I bent over really quick to pick it up, and I accidentally jerked the wheel, and I caught my neighbor's wheel, and we hit, and then our wheels got stuck, and they couldn't move. And remember when you texted me, I told you, I said, you got to start thinking with your brain. Yeah, my right. o- my only wreck in twelve years. That's my fault. Twelve years though, not bad. I've been driving for twelve years. Congratulations. And you said you were mad, and you texted me that I have to start using my brain. Well, I'm not mad. I'm just concerned. I'm concerned about you because I, I you're not thinking, mm-hmm. and when you're not thinking, you're gonna have a nicer car eventually, probably soon. And you're gonna, you gotta think, you gotta think a little bit. You're a young kid. How old are you? Twenty eight. I'm like th- I'm thirty five. I'm gonna be thirty six. I've been through the ringer. Mm. I've wrecked a ton of cars. Yeah. Okay. I've lost houses. I've done cocaine. I'm cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, you gotta think a little bit with your brain. Mm-hmm. You know, in the car, there's these, they let the, these Asians. They're like insects. And they get in a car to the Asian people. In the, <laughs> in the country, they're driving an ox. They put them in a car like this. And they're driving. Sebastian. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me tell you. Can I tell you guys something before I get out of here? <laughs> my father had pictures of Adolf Hitler in the house. Adolf Hitler, my father. My father told me the whole thing about what Hitler was trying to do for Germany. I got to be honest with you. Pretty good. Pretty good. And... uh and, and me and my family for years, I mean, we were, and listen, it's not a big deal, okay? But we're members of the American Nazi Party for years. My family, they're, they're Nazis, real Nazis, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 Goebbels, Heinrich Himmler, Hitler, Heinrich Himmler, <laughs> Hitler, Goebbels, okay? This is who we believe in. We believe in the fucking Nazi party. And I'm a bad guy. My wife's like, when we go to parties, can you shut up about the Hitler shit? I'm like, I would shut up about it if it wasn't dead fucking accurate. Okay, Lana? I'm kidding around. Sebastian says very nice things about me to people. He's never looked at me once, but he says very nice things about me to people. And then I do that impression, and I, I think that's, I think it's funny. Does he laugh? Does a guy like that laugh at that? I don't know. <laughs> this is a guy who refuses, like, to sp- to look at you, right? If you're the comedy store, he like refuses. He won't even look at you. I'll just like pretend to be on his phone or whatever. Yeah. But then he said very nice things about me. Yeah. Very laudatory things. So I don't know what that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know. I mean, <laughs> I knew you had one more. I knew you had one. I just can't, I, can I ask you a question? <laughs> the, <laughs> the lady, she goes, okay, we're getting your table ready. She goes, right, let me ask you a question. Number one, can we, we, can we sit in a corner? Okay. Number two, why don't they put these transgender people in hospitals? <laughs> Good night, everyone.